Good to see you. Tell somebody I'm alive and well and healthy, and I'm expecting miracles. Let's hold our Bibles up, if you would. And Lord, we commit this time to you, and we ask you to come, Holy Spirit, and minister to us tonight. Be our teacher. Blessing to our children, our youth, and all those who are helping by teaching and ministering in Jesus' name. And we all said, amen. All right, let's open our Bibles to the book of Psalms 150. And uh, pray for me. Pastor Gary's going to give me a signal at, one, at uh, 8.15. We're supposed to go get our children. This is uh, uh, every bit of a 45-minute message. So uh, <clears throat> I had, when I came back on Wednesdays, I was sharing with us uh, keys in the midst of the trial, keys to being victorious in the midst of trials. We're surrounded by a lot of challenges. We want to keep our eye on the Lord. We don't ignore them. We pray for them. And when we're done praying for them and interceding, we rise up in the anointing of God, fulfill our commission, and do the things that God wants us to do. And I was sharing some things with you that I have done all my life, and particularly in the middle of trials, and particularly the last 18 months. And uh, Psalm 150, verses 1 through 6, is a powerful verse. Praise ye the Lord. Praise God in His sanctuary. Praise God in the firmament of His power. Praise Him for His mighty acts. Praise Him according to His excellent greatness. Praise Him with the sound of the trumpet. And praise Him with the psaltery and harp. And praise Him with the timbrel and dance. Praise Him with stringed instruments and organs. Uh, praise, him, uh, uh, praise Him upon the loud cymbals. Praise Him upon the high-sounding cymbals. And let everything that has what? Breath. Praise the Lord. Amen. Now, Psalm 34, 1 through 3. I'm going to take a few moments to dive through some scriptures tonight. And if you would bear with me and write those down, or you can turn there and follow along. I'm reading from a King James. And here, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continue to be in my mouth. Let's say it together, I will. It's very important. We live through these seasons where God wills, God does sovereignly, but we also need to be quick to respond, I will. And we know by the grace of God, I will praise Him, I will sing, I will pray, I will do the things that God wants me to do. Amen? My soul shall make her boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt His name together. Second Timothy chapter 2, verse 8 just uh, making reference to it, that here Paul is writing to Timothy, I would, will, that men everywhere would lift their hands. Say it together. Lift your hands unto the Lord. My hands are holy. And when I lift my hands unto the Lord, I'm praising Him. I'm giving Him glory. It's, it's an action of faith that brings result. So I was sharing four things, four keys. Number one, and I, I like to wake up first thing in the morning if I can, and remember, especially when I was really struggling physically, I would begin to just praise the Lord. Isn't it amazing that the, the one true God, creator of heaven and earth, longs to hear us praise Him. He longs to hear your voice. He loves you. God loves you. If you know the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Savior today, if you have a relationship with God the Father through Christ, it's because the Holy Spirit introduced you to the love of God through Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord. And that love is never ending. That love is eternal. The agape love, Greek word for love, is pure and holy and of God. So number one, I like to just wake up trying to praise God and sing praises to Him. And then number two is to lift my hands. So let's just say it together, to lift my hands unto the Lord. And I'd be laying there in bed, and I'd just begin, to, when I wake up, well, and for a lot of that time, it was hard to get out of bed, meaning physically challenging. When I came through surgery 18 months ago, they, the therapist actually had to teach me how to get out of bed. Hello? And so I'm waking up, and I start praising the Lord, and I start lifting my hands. Let's say it again. I start lifting my hands. And 1 Corinthians chapter 14 is a verse that I know that we're very familiar with. But let me read this, and particularly verse 15, that says, What is it then? I will pray with the Spirit. 
I will pray with my understanding. So I'm going to pray in tongues. I'm going to pray with my understanding. And I will sing in the Spirit. And I will sing with the understanding. And so throughout, I, I, before I came here tonight, after we had a pastor meeting, I was able to rest just a little bit. And my strength is getting better. But throughout the day, I have to just rest and get ready to go again. I read over 100 verses in the Word of God related to praising God. Now, say it with me. I will praise the Lord. I'm going to lift my voice to Him. I'm going to sing my song to Him. And then number three, I like to lay hands on myself if it applies to my body and speak the Word of God. Or if I'm praying over my prayer journal and through the list of people, I began to just pray and speak the Word of God over your lives. And then number four, declaring Proverbs 3, 5 through 6 and others, let's say this together. No matter what, I trust you, Lord. So in the middle of a trial, in the middle of a battle, when things seem impossible, I'm going to trust him no matter what. I'm going to praise him. I'm going to lift my hands. I'm going to speak the word of God over the situation. If it's my own body, then I'm going to speak the word of God over my body. If it's over you in a prayer list or a situation, I'm going to lay my hands on it and speak the word of God over those situations. Hello? And the Word of God will change facts. So we're, we're not denying the facts. This person needs healing. This person uh, is crippled, whatever the case may be. We're going to speak the Word of God. We're going to pray for that person, love that person, and stand for life. And all of us said, yes, Lord. And then number four, in closing, I'm going to just begin to say, uh, declare how I trust Him. That I, He's faithful I've known the Lord now for 51 years, been born again for 51 years and a few months. And he's proven to be faithful. He's always faithful and you can trust him. And he's proven his faithfulness to us uh, time and time again. Now, praise is essential. Let's say it together. Praise is essential. And for those of you watching online tonight, the Lord bless you, heal you, strengthen you. And perhaps some of us might be thinking, well, I don't need to hear this. Folks, I want to tell you something. We really need to be hearing this during this time. All kind of mess around us. Next thing you know, we're distracted. And we've stopped worshiping the one true God. We stopped praising Him. And this is vital. Say it together. It's vital. Don't ever say, I'm not a praiser. You can say, I'm learning to be a praiser. I am becoming a praiser. And by the grace of God, I will learn to praise him. Psalm 100, verses 1 through 5 says, Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands, which is very closely related in many ways to Psalm chapter 150. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. This is the word of God for us. To praise him. To come with a heart of thanksgiving. To come singing my songs unto the Lord. Know ye that the Lord, he is God. It is he that made us, not we ourselves. We are his people, the sheep of his pasture. So verse 4, highlight that of Psalm 100. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving. How do you get into the presence of the Lord? Through praise. Through praise. And into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and begin to bless his name. For the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting. And his truth endureth to all generations. Praise the Lord. All right. Now. Oh, help me, Holy Spirit. When you praise, and praise is essential, you're entering into his presence. Yeah, well, I'm just in my car driving along. I'm, on, I'm at a job site. I have found myself of late praising the Lord quite a bit and singing songs to him and speaking the word. Uh, several times in my house working in the yard or with situations at home outside, uh, my neighbor frequents us and he pays attention to what's happening. I would say in a good way. And he's not a problem, but he's come over several times and caught me praising God, singing songs to him. And he would look around as if, uh oh, I interrupted uh, Mr. Johns or Jeff, whatever, 
uh, from talking to somebody. He would look around and see there's nobody there that he could see. But how many of you know the Lord's there? And I could tell, well, he was a little caught off guard, you know. And I would say to him, oh, I'm just singing and praising the Lord. Now, he's not saved yet. He doesn't go to church. To my knowledge, he's never gone to church. So for him to see a believer praising God in the yard, singing songs to the Lord in the yard, I don't think he's offended. I think he's curious because he keeps sneaking over. I mean, coming over. How's that? Although all of a sudden I look up and there he is. I went by the other day in a separate vehicle that he didn't recognize, and he was walking around in my yard. I think he was looking for a praiser. And that praiser probably was me. Never rude. He never does anything out of line. He's a great neighbor, and I really like him. So I don't want to miscommunicate in any way, but he's seeing something he's not experienced. And when we begin to praise the Lord, and it's just a spontaneous reaction, folks are going to see things that they have not experienced before. And we need to be ready to take them to the Word. (laughs) All right. Praise enables us to enter into the presence of God. So say this with me. When I praise the Lord, I'm entering into His presence. You enter into His gates with singing and into His courts with praise, and praise is essential. And so when you begin to praise the Lord, which uh, we did tonight, Sister Jana taught last Wednesday on this and did an excellent job. And Sunday, our uh, congregation through, uh, as we heard the prophetic words and Sister Jana and Eric stepped up and began to lead us, we began to, to praise and live 1 Corinthians 14, 15. I will sing to the Lord with my song of understanding, with my song in the spirit. I will pray with my known language and in the Spirit. The beautiful thing about praying and speaking in the Spirit is the Holy Spirit gives us the words. It's a miracle. And we're speaking unto God. Now, when we do that, just go like this. We're sowing that praise from our heart to heaven. And when we sow praise towards God into the heavens, then God sends harvest earthward. Now, that's not why I'm praising him. It's not why I'm worshiping him. I worship him and praise him. I praise him, first of all, for what he has done. I worship him for who he is. So I'm, I'm praising him. You have blessed me. You have given me life. You have given me victory over death. You have healed me and enabled me to raise up out of this sickbed. You have met my needs and protected my children. I give you praise. Hello? These are the things you've done. In your grace and mercy, you saved my soul and more. But know that when we sow heavenward out of this heart of gratitude and love and adoration, that God begins to send miracles to the earth. Praise the Lord. So when I say you want to feed the hungry, begin to praise God. You want to see people healed, begin to sing your song and praises unto the Lord. Now, particularly with men, uh, I suspect more so than women, the enemy would like to bombard us with lies. You can't sing. Your voice doesn't amount to anything. Who do you think you are? Anyone experience any thoughts like that? They're not from the Lord. Hello? He loves to hear your voice. Say it together. He loves to hear your voice. And I was uh, meeting with a specialist one time, and they were examining my Uh, esophagus in my throat and I was having some challenges about a decade ago when I was 50 I was preaching four or five times I was preaching four sometimes four or five times a day I preached 4,000 times in 20 years folks that's a whole lot let me tell you a lot of times in situations where young man if you could turn this up just a little my voice in in this speaker thank you uh, and the, the lady that was the doctor that was working with me, she said, your, your throat is scarred from the top all the way down. You're full of scars. And uh, by the time you're 70, you wouldn't even have a voice box left. <clears throat> but the Lord has healed me and the Lord has blessed me. And I have a voice left. And so 13 years later, I'm still strong. Amen. 
when you so praise heavenward, and she said to me, uh, you, you, it's a miracle you can talk. And she said, now you'll never uh, have a, uh, uh, a song leading voice. You'll never be in a something, something choir. I said, oh, yes, I will. Oh, yes, I will. I say, in anointing, we can sing as well as anybody. Come on. And, and God wants to hear our voice. He longs to hear your voice. All right. Let me read Revelation chapter 19. I want to read verse 5 and 6. Now, when you praise the Lord, this, how many of you have ever been to Niagara Falls? It's an incredible experience to see it, watch it, and listen to it, to hear it. It's thundering. But it's not nearly as thundering as what John the Revelator saw in the 19th chapter in verses 1 through 5. And here he, verse 5 and 6, he says that a voice came out of the throne saying, Praise our God, all ye his servants. Say again, all ye his servants. Who? All the servants. Praise the Lord. And ye that fear him, both small and great, no matter what your situation is, no matter what your position is, begin to praise him. And I heard, as it were, the voice of a great multitude as the voice of many waters, as a voice of mighty thundering, saying, Hallelujah, for the Lord God omnipotent reigneth. When we praise the Lord, it makes a heavenly sound that shakes the entire atmosphere. When you lift your voice, as frail and as weak as my voice was, and as short of oxygen as I was, but I lift my hands and I just began to sing to the Lord a little bit. Oh, praise the Lord. Tell somebody that's like a mighty waterfall. It joins with all the saints. When I came out this last time, <clears throat> my throat a little raspy and very sore. They stuck tubes in me and tested me and one thing after another. But my voice hurt. My throat hurt. My voice it didn't sound very good. It was raspy. I couldn't speak with much strength. When I came back after I preached, uh, shared a little bit on Monday night the first time, I tested Monday nights uh, because that's a mature crowd. And I didn't know if I could last, I didn't know how long I could go. It was too risky to try to preach a sermon because I might not last. And, uh, People texted me, they said, Pastor, it's so good to see you, but I'm surprised how weak you are, how weak your voice is. Here's what I said, oh, you can't believe how strong my voice has become. Yeah, I would look at a little different, see. God wants us to look at our voice unto him a little different. You have some situations in your life right now you don't know the answers to. You have some situations in your life that need a miracle. When you begin to go like this and just lift your voice to the Lord, no matter how weak you may be, no matter how frail, no matter how early in the morning, you begin to release answers to earth from heaven. Your praise does. It may seem weak or broken or, or crackly or whatever to you, but to God, it's an awesome, awesome savor. And he loves to hear your voice. How many of you love to hear the voice of your kids, your children, your grandkids? Always praise him for what he has done. We give him thanks for what he's accomplished. We worship in our lives in his grace. And when we worship, it is for who he is. He is the one true God. And it's more about who he is. And when you begin to worship, you're worshiping the person of the Lord Jesus Christ. Can I hear an amen? Now, I have covered this before, so I'm going to keep this in, in a bit of brevity. I just share some scriptures and four of them, and four of the themes of this. I particularly want the men to hear this. And for those of you that are watching out there, pastors and leaders, you know when it's the hardest for a worship team to lead the congregants into praise and worship? Ministers gathering, leadership summit. They're, they're, they're so used to governing and leading, and when they come together with congregants, they're, they're not dialed in to be worshipers. 
they're dialed in to, to minister the word, to serve the Lord, to minister the body. But, but we don't come with the mindset of being a worshiper. Hello? And God wants to give us such a liberty that just go like this. No matter what responsibilities you have, maybe you're scheduled to preach. Well, I'm going to worship. I'm going to lift my hands and worship. Even last Sunday when I have to really guard my energy, I have to really guard uh, my voice. And last Sunday when I finished preaching, I preached two services and I had the opportunity to dedicate a baby, which means a lot to me, and to bless that young man uh, going to the Marine Corps. Others could have done it. I didn't do it because they can't. Uh, I do it because I love them and it means a lot to me. So when Jaina and Pastor Eric began to sing in the spirit and lead us to join them, well, I turned on my mic and I began to just sing along and worship the Lord and sing spontaneously unto the Lord. <clears throat> Pastor Gary, when I got done, he said, you need to go rest. You look like you're tired. I said, I am tired. I went home, ate a bite and laid down in bed for two and a half hours on a Sunday afternoon. It's very rare for me to lay down and sleep two and a half hours ever. Uh, but I woke up and had other things I needed to do. And it was all I had. If you ever awakened when you just can't hardly even wake up. But God in his grace, say together, God in his grace. And say it with me. My effort of praise is worth all it takes. Always. Always. Praise him. Here's, how, here's ways to praise him. Psalm 26, verse 7. I can praise him with the voice of thanksgiving. So just start saying this with me. Thank you, Lord. Just start. I thank you, Lord. I thank you that you've met my needs. I thank you that uh, a year ago today, I have a picture of my father recovering from open heart surgery. And I sent him a text this morning giving God thanks. Nine hours of surgery, seven major things with three surgeons. And he's alive and well today, recovered miraculously. So I, I don't even know how my phone does this. It has a mind of its own. It just, boom, pictures from a year ago. And I think, well, where'd those come from? How'd that phone do that? I just went through there, started praising the Lord. Some pictures of my grandson, some pictures of my dad, some pictures of my son uh, putting rock out at my house where we built a driveway on top of um, uh, sewer and water lines and things. I just started giving, so just say, thank you, Lord. Thank you my dad's alive. Thank you that uh, my grandsons are here. And you just, you start thanking the Lord and praising the Lord. You give him thanks for these things, you're praising him. Hello? We, we complain enough through the day. Whine about all kind of mess. Let's praise the Lord a lot more and give him thanks. Psalm 47, verse 1. I praise him with a voice of triumph. Say it together, voice of triumph. Every so often, not in a habitual type of way, but every so often, depending on how the Holy Spirit is moving, for many, many years, for several decades, I would just say, let's just shout unto the Lord the voice of triumph. And we, by choice, although the Holy Spirit has generally moved us in that direction, we just begin to shout unto the Lord. Hello? You may find this hard to believe, but uh, you could go to a football game and watch both teams come onto the field. And you can usually tell who's going to win by the way they come on the field. It's the way they shout. I've never watched a football game in the natural. Uh, I went to one once. I had free tickets. And I thought, well, I'll go. A college game. A big stadium. And... Uh, the team that I would have liked to have been shouting for lost all the time. I had a son with me. He was little. They ran out, they came out on the field and came to the sideline. And I said, We're leaving. I can't stand this. 
What's wrong? They're walking. Their shirts are untucked. They don't even have their helmets on, some of them, and hardly anybody has a chin strap snapped on. I'm not going to tolerate this. They came out losers, and they'll go back losers, and I don't have the patience for this. So let's go get ice cream or something valuable rather than sit and lack and watch the lack of triumphant in their heart. And I never even saw the kickoff. They lost. I could tell you this. You knew they lost when they came out. They weren't ready. They weren't prepared. They didn't spend two and a half hours putting tape on. When you... Praise the Lord, the voice of triumph. There's a difference in the spirit realm. One of the benefits of praising God is victory that comes to you over your enemies. We don't praise him because of it. I'll share that with you in a little bit. But when you start praising God, you start winning in the spirit realm. Your battles begin to have victory. You sow it to heaven and answers begin, miracles begin to come from heaven. I teach, I have a teaching here. Uh, I tell you what, we need to get more hungry for the Word of God. In nine levels of worship, by the time you get to level six and seven, you've come through worship and then you move into, you move into, you, here the psalm tells us how to enter into his presence. But it also teaches us how to pass through gates. And you move from praise into worship, into supernatural creative miracles. Come on now. Number three, here's how to praise. Uh, with a song, you, with a voice of psalm, a voice of song, 98 verse 5. Say together, 98 verse 5. Now, if you think you don't know how to sing a psalm, open your Bible up and just start singing. Just open up Psalm 100. Open up Psalm 105. And just begin to sing your own song right out of the Word of God. A praise psalm right out of the Word of God. Just start singing it to God. Number four, a voice of rejoicing. Psalm 118, verse 15. Now, praise is a voice of victory. Let's say it together. Praise is a voice of victory. Now, men, you just go like this. You can praise Him with your lips. Say it together. You can praise Him with your lips. That's one way you praise the Lord. Go like this. When we do this, we're praising him. When I say to you, let's give God thanks for our children. We're celebrating our children, but we're giving thanks and giving praise to God for those kids. Who, by the way, are worth everything. Everything. They're going to receive our entire inheritance. It's one of the reasons we follow policy. So we can hand them an inheritance. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Go like this, everybody. Just all you men, just go like this. You're praising the Lord. This is an act of victory right here. Just wave your hands unto the Lord a little bit like this. I go around through the day sometimes, just go like this. Every so often in conference when I have gone all I can go and done all I can do, I had Jim and Joe and some others say, just come up here and go like this and pray over the people. Just go like this. Well, what's this do? This gives victory. This releases victory. Hello? Who held up the hands of Moses? Why did they do it? So the warriors in battle could have victory. Brother Johnny used to tell me wherever he was ministering, if he, even if he couldn't see me, he'd say, I could tell when you walk off the platform. When we're ministering to people, I can tell when you walk off the platform. Go like this. You see, you make a difference. You make a difference. When you're tempted with, with thoughts that aren't of God, when you're depressed or discouraged or angry, go like this. Praise the Lord. Lord, I just praise you. I just want to give you thanks right now. And go like this, men. 
you also praise him with the dance. That ought to get you a little freer. Start lifting your hands because it's a lot easier to lift your hands and start dancing. But you can dance before the Lord too. Praise the Lord. Let's say together. Praise the Lord. I spent time one time, Jason, in a service in Alaska. I was there many times all over and ministered to lots and lots of people and a lot of First Nation people. I got invited one time, uh, I've told this testimony, but uh, to a, a, a group of First Nation people, a certain tribe in a kind of a remote area. It's hard to get there. I said, well, I'll come. And they said, we want you to minister on Holy Spirit. I said, all right. They said, we have people who want to be baptized in the Holy Spirit. I said, just tell them to come and they'll receive the Holy Spirit. So we got there that night, <clears throat> me and one other minister, and I was the one doing the preaching that night. And <clears throat> there were 400 people there, First Nation people. I taught on Holy Spirit a little bit. Said, come on up here and we'll make some prayer lines and we're going to pray for everybody to receive baptism of the Holy Spirit. And he came. He came. And the man with me said, what do you want me to do? I said, you start right there on the front row and I'll start right here on the front row and you go that way and I'll go this way. Then you go over there on the second row and you come this way and I'll come that way. When we get there, and go down that line in such a fashion. When we get to the end, if there's anybody left on your side, I'll go that way. If there's anybody left on my side still standing, you go that way. So I covered his area. He covered mine. And everybody was out in the Spirit speaking in tongues. They'd all been baptized in the Holy Spirit. Let's give God praise. I've had five graduate level classes on prophetic. I'm sorry, on poetry and wrote poetry. And my professors were geniuses. One owned a, a printing company, a, what do you call it, publishing company. And uh, they wanted me to publish some of my poetry. But the Lord didn't lead me to do that. And on the front row next to the wall was a little lady. She might have weighed maybe 90 pounds. And life, the enemy had been very hard on her in her life, Brother Jim. And she was, she had suffered. She was maybe only 40, but she looked very old. She had, had, she had scars and she'd, whatever had happened, it had been a hard life. I laid my hands on her ever so gently and she just slid gently down the wall, very, very gently slid down the wall. She started saying, and then she started prophesying in English. She was out in the spirit in poetry. She saw heaven. She saw the garden in heaven and flowers. She could smell the aroma and see the colors. She was prophesying under the anointing, baptized in the Holy Spirit in the most beautiful poetry I've ever read apart from the word of God. I stood there and listened to that little woman then I went on down the lines, covered the other side. The other man covered the other side. When I got completely done, everybody was out in the spirit. And uh, <clears throat> by now it's like five o'clock in the morning. Now, First Nation people are more open to the spirit realm than we Caucasians. By far. So they start getting baptized in the Holy Spirit. You're going to see some deliverances. Because they're open to the spirit realm. Demonic, they need the Holy Spirit. And they would not go home. They would stay till five or six in the morning. I had many meetings where I'd minister to people till five or six in the morning. Then I'd go back and rest a little bit. And because we were, we were done, they were just soaking, you know. And they weren't in a hurry to leave. They were in the glory. Then I went back over and stood near this little lady. Didn't want to invade the holiness or the privacy of what God was doing. Jason, but... She, she was still prophesying in poetry. Let's say this together. God is awesome. All that testimony to tell you this and teach you this. 
In the previous meeting on another island, an elderly man, almost 90, First Nation man, he and I got into glory during worship and danced before the Lord for almost three hours. Now, when that meeting was over, here's what the leaders told me. We've had people coming here, if I remember right, 25 years, and nobody on this island has ever been baptized in the Holy Spirit. I'm glad they didn't tell me that until I was done. Everybody's baptized in the Holy Spirit. What caused that breakthrough anointing? Say it with me. Praise and dance. And that old man, I say that respectfully, he and I got into glory, and he was dancing first. And I came near him. You always want to approach the glory. I felt drawn to go over there. I said, sir, would you tell me what you're doing? Now, he was a First Nation person, so he had a, a, a step that was like dancing to a drum. He could dance just to a drum, whether there was a drum or not. I said, would you teach me what you're doing? He said, yes, I'm approaching the king. He said, now, so he would go something like this. and He'd move. And as he moved, he'd bow and get lower, dancing. He said, you bow to the king when you come in, and you bow when you, you stand up when you back away. You don't bow, you don't bow in and just stand up. You're worshiping him. He says, so I'm worshiping going in and worshiping coming out. And so with the music that was being played and the anointing that was there, we danced before the Lord in, in a very uh, simple dance that we were able to do by the anointing for so long. Hello? That dance brought a breakthrough. We had a youth meeting one time, and Naomi that was here and several others. We danced before the Lord. The people were dancing before the Lord as unto the Lord. It was holy. It was a different type of dance than that First Nation man, but it was holy. It was very reverent. And it brought an incredible move of God where many people were saved and filled with the Holy Spirit. When you dance before the Lord and you offer Him your dance, folks, I got news for you. God's going to send some answers. God's going to send some answers. Say together, God's going to send some answers. When JB, under the anointing, takes off dancing like he does, jumping so high, I know this. Say this with me. Something's going to happen. When Pastor Martha steps out, and oftentimes it's related some uh, to your ethnicity. It's related to where God has brought you from and what God has done. Hello? Hello? We, we don't all do the same thing. I've never seen that done before or since, but I've been invited to minister at many, 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 many reservations, many nations, and saw the glory come in a powerful way. Let's say together, dance is one way of praise. Lifting my hands is one way of praise. Uh, Clappy, if you go with me uh, to Nigeria and we go minister in Nigeria, you will see these um, women, uh, particularly the older ones, with such rhythm and beat that you'll just stand in awe. You'll be able to join them because of the anointing. Of course, you can't do what they can do yet without an incredible anointing, but they will clap their hands in such a way, in such a rhythm and such a beat that you'll stand in awe as unto the Lord for hours at 100 plus degrees. That's the anointing. Say it with me. The anointing breaks yokes. You, you may have seen me upon occasion, may not have recognized it, but you, you may see it in the future. Sometimes in worship, I still uh, move and dance before the Lord like that and bow down as I go in and stand when I come out. It's, it, it's because I believe it's what the Lord wants. Hello? Now, Hebrews chapter 13, I want to go to verse 15. 
<clears throat> Let's say this together. We're learning a lot. We're learning a lot. And I don't take it lightly. This is the word of God. I'd preach this as hard as there were two of you or one of you. I'd preach this as hard as there were a thousand of us. Hebrews 13, 15 says, and the Lord wants to correct some of our thinking here and, and bring our thinking into alignment to the truth. Hebrews 13, 15 says, let us offer, all of us, the body of Christ, let us offer the sacrifice of praise. Say it together, the sacrifice of praise. Now, Candace, you and Christian have made tremendous progress. We're very proud of you. In COVID, you have risen in the anointing. God's going to increase you. He's increased your anointing and power. And you'll have more authority when you come out of this season than you had going in. But you will lead people in spontaneous dance as well as uh, prepared dance. Both are anointed. One's not better than the other. They just occur differently. <clears throat> but you'll be able to do it with a holiness. One of the things that many apostles that have visited here have said to me, when people here begin to move in the dance of the Lord, it's holy. So many times it lacks holiness. But our dance unto the Lord should always bring holiness. Come on now. Not attention to ourselves, but unto God. It's unto God. Let us offer the sacrifice of praise <clears throat> to God continually. So just go like this. Let's offer the sacrifice of praise to God continually. Let's, just, let's praise the Lord. Comma. The fruit of our lips giving thanks to his name. Now I want to read this verse one more time. Let us offer the sacrifice of praise to God continually, the fruit of our lips, giving thanks to his name. Now, we could go to Psalm 27, verse 4, and others, but I, I will not, for time's sake tonight, do that. Sacrifice of praise does not mean, well, I'm going to come in here and suffer today and praise God. I'm going to get up and be on time and really sacrifice to God. And I'm going to come in here and be happy, even though things are bad, and they're difficult, and the world's a mess. I'm still going to sacrifice and suffer and give God praise. That is not what this verse means. So go like this, throw it away. The sacrifice is the fruit of our lips. Go like this. It's the fruit of our lips. So let us offer a sacrifice of praise to God continually, meaning let's give him, say it with me, the fruit of our lips. I'm going to, by the Spirit of God, the river that's inside of me that, that Jesus spoke of in John 7, 38, out of your spirit, man, shall flow what? Rivers of living waters, of words. Let us offer these words from our lips unto God. Can I hear an Amen. I'm going to praise the Lord today. That means I'm going to bring him the fruit of my lips. My sacrifice to him is going to be, say it together, the fruit of my lips. And when we come together for corporate worship on Sundays or Wednesdays or whenever, uh, I'll cover that more a little bit later. We need to come here with our children, come on now, with our grandchildren, with our families, with our friends with the realization that I'm going to come to the house of the Lord today and I'm going to bring him a sacrifice. I'm going to bring him the fruit of my lips and I'm going to sing to him today. I'm going to lift my hands to him today. Even if I don't have a voice, even if there's tubes in my throat, I'm going to bring him a sacrifice of praise. I'm going to praise him. Say, God, I'm going to praise him. I may not even be able to get out of bed, but I can wiggle my feet. Come on, I can lift my, I can lift my hands. One, one day they stuffed my intestines back inside my body. And uh, the surgeon would work on me 12 and a half hours, 13 hours later. And the surgeon said, they went inside you. I said, I know, I just told you they did. I could feel them. 
He said, that's a miracle. I said, I know. He said, don't move. Don't move for 12 and a half hours. Don't move. Don't move your hand. Don't move your head. Don't move your arms. Don't move anything. I said, well, lift my hands up on top of my stomach then. He did. He said, why? I said, at least I can work on my phone and I can praise the Lord. Go like this. I'm praising the Lord. He said, well, we just saved you from getting 12 feet of your intestines cut out. I said, I believe it. That's why I want my hands up here. Go like this. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Some of you sometimes sitting back there thinking, I don't know if I believe that or not. Stick around. The last time I went in the emergency room, that same doctor came in there, a young guy, and he has a nurse practitioner. She's kind of a young lady. She's, she's blondish, blonde with blue eyes-ish, and he is too. You'd think they were from Sweden or somewhere. I don't know what nation they're from. He walked in there this last go-round. He said, I said to him, I remember you. He said, I remember you. I said, I haven't been here since I last saw you. He said, well, at least your intestines are inside you. And I said, praise God. Here's another miracle. They weren't twisted. They weren't bound. And I never had to have any surgery. Put your hands like this. Praise God, praise God, praise God. This is praising God. This is bringing victory to your situation. The doctor came in at 8.30 or so. He was exhausted, Christian man. Oh, he was so tired. He'd been doing surgery all day. He said, oh, Pastor Johns, I'm sorry. I have come sooner, but I've been in surgery all day. I said, hey, if you're too tired, just come back in the morning. I'll be fine. I'll just lay here and praise the Lord. He said, oh, no, we got to fix you up tonight. He said, I got to do this tonight. I said, okay, well, then have at it. While you have at it, go like this. I'm going to praise the Lord. I'm down to a minute. Whew. Can we freeze time somehow? Joshua prayed that in. Can you, whoever comes to the keyboard, and if you're going to help me with worship, come on up. Uh, uh, <laughs> okay, say so good. Sacrifice of praise is the fruit of your lips. It's the words from your heart out your mouth. I'm going to offer God. Go like this. I'm going to offer God sacrifice of praise. I'm going to give this to him. I'm going to give him my words of thanks and gratitude and praise. I'm going to praise him right in the middle of all the mess. I may not even be able to get out of bed. They may tell me I can't even move. I'll tell you, we'll put my hands up here. At least I can go like this. Twelve hours, I mean, like this. And sometimes like that. That's texting. This is praising. You can practice it tonight when you lay in bed. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. You can just imagine your intestines are outside your body and they just went back in. You'll be going like this. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Let's all stand. I'll try to close. Isaiah the prophet 57 verse 19 said, I create the fruit of the lips, the gratitude, the thankfulness for your salvation and being freed from sin and coming to know Jesus Christ, having eternal life. Hey, the prophet said, God said to the prophet, I create the fruit of your lips. How many of you know he even gives us a sacrifice? He provides it just like he did for Isaac and Abraham. He provided a sacrifice. He'll provide a sacrifice for us, Jason, no matter what kind of predicament we have. How many of you ever went to bed with a problem, didn't know how to fix it, something maybe mechanically to repair, maybe a relationship problem? You went to bed praying and praising God and got up, you woke up and you had the answer. How many of you have ever awakened and had the answer? Keep a notebook close and write it down and don't ever take it for granted. And all the church said, amen. Well, let's give God praise if you would. We're, we're learning that that is giving him praise. Amen. I'm going to close in prayer. Thank you for being here tonight. Thank you for joining us online. Oh, come hungry for the Word of God. Come hungry for the presence of God. We'll be here on Monday nights. I intended to be here Monday, but I couldn't. I just absolutely got too tired. And the pastors covered for me, and I thank them for that, and Paula and others. And I thank you for coming, because you coming makes a difference. But we have a lot to intercede for, 
as we start gathering together now on Monday nights, our conference is coming up and people are going to come from all over the world. And we need to pray into it. We need to do some fasting that the glory of God would come. And uh, we want his presence to be here. And it's going to be different than it has been in the past, but it's going to be really powerful. Can I hear an amen? Now, some of the things may be the same, but some will be different. And God wants to begin to get us ready to go back to work. The church needs to get ready to go back to work. And when we come together in November, we're going to need helpers. We're going to need workers. We're going to need all hands on deck. So let's get ready to do some praying and some fasting and get ourselves ready and get our hearts ready for our guests. Several hundred, hundreds have already pre-registered. We're already at some real good numbers. And oh, we want to come hungry for God to move. Amen. So Lord, we thank you for the word tonight. And we ask you to seal these words in our hearts. And we ask you to forgive us. We could be in a worship service and never be a worshiper. We could be someone that could sing a song but never be giving God praise. And we ask you to help us with our heart and to cause us to come with great expectations and ready to serve God and worship God. Let let the dance break forth. Let your glory fill this place. Let let people just come under the anointing and just, just lay before God and honor him. Let us come ready to sing unto the Lord a new song. And Father, we thank you. We give you praise and we give you glory. And now I want to release you to go get your children. Bless your giving as you give. Thank you. At least extend your hand and pray over it when you leave. Thank you for your faithfulness. And we're going to worship a while and the altar is open. If you feel led of Holy Spirit to come, pastors are here to pray for you and minister to you. If you're here and don't know Jesus Christ, your Lord and Savior, come on up and receive him today. Make the greatest decision you ever made in your life. We love you. We'll see you on Sunday. Well, men, I hope you can come on Friday. We'll have a wonderful time together. God bless you. As we come to the conclusion of our service, hey, thank you for joining us, being online with us. We so enjoy you being a part in our relationship and being a part of what God is doing. We consider it an honor. We thank the Lord has given us opportunity to share what's happening here at Whitehorse with all of you wherever you are. I want to encourage you and remind you, if you would like to give, there are different ways to give. You can give online, whcc.net. You can give by phone by calling the church, 765-477-1111. You can send check or money order to the address here, 1780 Cumberland Avenue, West Lafayette, Indiana, 47906. Or you can come by and give in person. Your giving helps us maintain, sustain, and continue the work of the gospel and reaching out to the nations. Be sure to tithe your local church. Be a blessing to your pastors, your elders, and your leaders. Send your testimonies to us, please. We love to hear your testimonies and share them. My testimony at whcc.net. Be sure to pray with one another as we've come to conclusion. Let the theme of the message today and what Holy Spirit is doing be joined with faith that you might move forward in the power of the Holy Spirit and be blessed. Thank you for our relationship. Thanks for all you've done to help us carry out the vision. God bless you.